Okay, so I'd like you to try both of these first, given what we just introduced in the theory portion of this. So go ahead and put this on pause and see if you can try both example one and example two, and then we'll come back and check. Okay, so for this one, I'm trying to find the mass of this wire, and you can actually notice if you plotted this, um, since the x and the y components are cosine and sine, those will just be tracing out a circle in the xy plane. But since z is t, you're going to be getting this helical shape because your z component's increasing in time. All right, so we're basically trying to figure out what is the mass of this wire given density. Mass is going to be the line integral over this curve of the density, which we can write as this. And then we're going to need to change variables by parameterizing. In this case, the parameterization is already given to us, right? They tell us, okay, this curve is traced out as cosine t, sine t, and t from 0 to 4 pi. So we can find, basically what we're trying to do is rewrite the integrand now and then rewrite ds. So let's do both in my new in my new uh, coordinates t, t is going to be going from 0 to 4 pi and then we can replace the integrand. This will be 5 minus x in this case is cosine t, y is sine t, and z is t. And then I need to replace ds. So recall a tiny little distance is going to be my speed times my time. So I need to figure out what speed is. So I'm going to take the magnitude of this velocity, which is giving me square root of sine squared plus cosine squared plus 1. And these two combined will give me 1, so this is going to give me square root of 2. So my ds is going to become square root of 2 dt. And then I can just go through and do this integral. And we will get 4 square root of 2 pi times 5 plus 2 pi. Um, and this would be in grams because we had said that its density was in grams per centimeter. All right, nice. And then let's go to example two. I think it's good to draw this first and also make a few guesses yourself before, or make at least a guess yourself before calculating. So this is this semicircle of radius three. And I guess I didn't tell you top versus bottom. Let's assume it's the top semicircle. Okay, so centroid is going to be the average location of the x and y values along this wire. And something that's not always obvious, but it's um, really interesting about centroids is they don't have to lie on the object themselves. You could think of a donut even as a basic example. The centroid is really just pointing out where is the average x and y locations. So in this case, I'm just going to make a random guess. I think it's a little bit more than halfway up. I don't think it's quite halfway down. So maybe something closer to 0, 2. One, uh, one thing you can do right away is from symmetry, you'll notice that x bar is just going to be 0 because this wire has constant density and it's symmetric about the y-axis. Now, if you didn't see that or you don't believe it, you can always do the math. But in this case, we can just say, okay, x bar equals 0 by symmetry. Okay, now y bar. So this is going to be an average value. I want an average y location, which means I'm just going to take the line integral of y over just the line integral of ds, which I'll do, er, uh, geometrically is just the arc length. So back in Calc 2, you actually have already done some of these scalar line integrals when you were calculating arc length. We can do this out algebraically, but I would just say we know what the arc length of half of this circle is. In this case, it's going to be 1 half times the circumference, and the circumference would be 2 pi r. So we can just say, okay, this is going to be 3 pi. That's in the denominator. Now we still need to do the numerator piece, and that is going to involve us needing to parameterize and change variables. So 
let's rewrite it here and then see the easiest way that we could parameterize this. All right, so easiest way to parameterize a circle, and we really only need to parameterize the top half of the circle here. So I'm still gonna use cosines and sines, but I just need a top half. And then I'm going to need the velocity so I can rewrite ds in terms of Jacobian. I'm going to need the speed eventually. And let's just change colors to so you can be a little so you can see what I'm doing a little more clearly. When I now rewrite everything in terms of t, I'm starting at 0. I'm now going to pi. I'm rewriting my y in terms of my parameterization. So in my parameterization, y is 3 sine t. And then ds becomes 3 dt. So that's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so this is going to give me, this is just going to give me 6 over pi. I ran out of room, so I'm just going to do that integral in my head. Um, and x bar is 0 by symmetry, so this gives us our final answer. x bar y bar is going to be 0 and then 6 over pi which is approximately 1.91, so just a little bit less than 2. Okay, so now let's look at a couple frequently asked questions about line integrals. One of the first things we have to think about is what if we have a piecewise smooth curve? So what if our curve is, for example, something like this, and then this, and then this, and then, I don't know, I'm just making four sides. And so in this case, we're going to have to break this up into four different line integrals and parameterize each of these sides separately and add them up. And then next question, these next two questions, actually, I'd like you to try the next example. Make a guess first as to whether or not you think if we change the direction of the curve or use a different parameterization, do you think the line integral will change? And then if we change the path between the two points, do you think the line integral will change? And then we're going to try an example on the next page to test out our hypothesis, and we'll come back and revisit these questions after that.